Hello everybody, Scott Welly, hope you're having a good day. And last night I was fortunate and privileged to be able to listen to Wilson Kipsang, who's, uh, if you don't know who he is, he's the world's greatest marathoner. He's the only guy to have, I think it's six different marathons under 205, which is like 440 pace per mile. <laughs> it's just absolutely mind-boggling stuff. So not only have I dedicated my life and always been fascinated by what the highest performers in any area of life, like what they do, how they think, and how they kind of go about and, and operate their daily routines. Uh, but then certainly, you know, being a runner, I was very interested to hear some of the things that he had to say because I just think that we can always learn from certainly what the greatest and what the best in the world do as far as how they go about different things. So again, I got to listen to him lecture for about 30 minutes and it's, it's just mind boggling the paces that these guys are running at these days. I couldn't run one mile at 440 pace and if I did I would probably have a heart attack uh, but still I want to kind of break it down and give you three simple concepts that I took from his lecture and some of the Q&A that we got to do afterwards that I think will help you out in your own training will help you achieve better results so one of the first questions that somebody asked is they were asking him about like weekly mileage like he just got done doing the New York City Marathon uh, I think he finished in 212, so he wasn't actually, which is still a crazy time, but he wasn't close to winning that race. Uh, but they were asking him, like, when you're getting ready for a big race, how many miles are you doing each week and what percentage of those miles are speed work? And he was saying that he does about 110 to 120 miles a week, which there are very few people on the planet that can handle that kind of mileage. And by no means am I telling you to do that. But one of the interesting things that he talked about is when he got into his pacing. And you have to think about it. He said the majority of his miles, and he didn't actually give a percentage as far as his speed work goes, but if you've ever heard me talk about in any of my books or otherwise, staying out of the gray area, it's basically what he was talking about. Because he was saying the majority of his miles are at six minute miles or a little bit slower. Now, I'm sure you're probably saying six minute miles, that's still really fast, and to me that would be really fast too. But think about it in terms of relatives. Like think about it if, if 440 pace is his marathon kind of race pace when he's racing well, and he's running six minute miles or a little over, he's a minute and 20 seconds to a, let's say a minute and 30 seconds slower than what he's capable of running a marathon at. So honestly, the more of these high level marathoners that I hear speak, whether it's somebody that's doing maybe breaking three hours or somebody that's a world record holder and has gone under 205 multiple times, the more I hear them talk about separating those things out and how slow they actually go on their long runs. And it's just such a thing that I don't see enough people doing this because I usually explain to some of my private clients that when you put together a training program, it's kind of like a puzzle. And if one piece of the puzzle is off just a little bit it affects everything else so how you have to look at your long run is I see too many people that'll be doing their long runs when they're getting ready for a marathon at race pace or at maybe even a little bit faster than race pace and what that does is it doesn't necessarily kill you on that run like you can get through one run but it leaves you overly fatigued and then the other part that he talked about and what all high-level runners do is then when you get to a part where you do need to run fast on your tempo runs or your intervals and speed work you're not able to do it because you've overly fatigued your body too much on these long runs so hopefully that makes sense sometimes one of the best things you can do for your running to get faster is to actually run slower on some of those recovery runs and on some of those long runs because it gives you more gas in the tank when you need to go hard on those other runs so that's the first thing. The second thing is somebody asked him where he does the majority of his training because, I mean, he travels around to different marathons periodically, and he said that he does the majority of his training in Kenya, actually. That's where he lives year-round when he's not traveling to do a marathon or other media appearances and things like that. And people have long speculated on why Kenyans are the best marathoners and lots of different theories out there but somebody asked him about nutrition he basically just says I, I eat when I get hungry I don't have any special diet or anything like that but when he was talking about Kenya to me if you've ever heard me talk about how every psychological study will say you will become typically the average of the five people you're closest to in terms of health and wealth and finances and happiness and things like that. Like if you wanna be better in any area of your life, surround yourself with better people. 
And to me, like especially for a lot of these people that live in Kenya that are maybe born into poverty and things like that, running is a way out for them. Like it's, it's a way for them to escape and it's a way for them to get out of their current circumstances. And I doubt anybody watching this video is probably in those circumstances, but I think it speaks to also like growing up in Kenya because it's become such a cultural thing, distance running and, and distance running fast and running these, unbelievably fast times like when you surround yourself with that type of culture of excellence it just demands that you're pulled up it demands that you move the needle and that you level up and that you work hard every day so what i would tell you to go back to is regardless of what if you're just getting into running or triathlon or whatever it might be and you want to get a little bit faster buddy up to some people in a run club or a tri club or find some other people that are just a little bit above your level like i can't go train with the Kenyans right now or i'll kill myself but i should probably pick some people that are just a little bit above my level that will force me to raise my game that will pull me up and that will force me to kind of step outside of my comfort zone and that's a huge thing because it's just gonna kind of demand more of you and ultimately it's just it's that culture of excellence and it just makes you level up so i think that's probably something that's definitely overlooked because people can just kind of oh, i just train alone or i just train with the same people all the time i uh, trust me if you want to get better just surround yourself with better people you'll automatically get pulled up so that's the second thing and then the third thing was actually a question that i asked many of you know that i'm kind of the mental guy I'm not mental, but <laughs> I'm the mental training guy and the sports psychology guy. So I asked him, I said, you know what? Why are you so good in some of these races? Like mentally, what do you tell yourself if you're trying to run a 203 marathon that allows you to hold the pace when the going gets tough? And he, I don't know if it was kind of the language barrier or, or exactly what it is if he didn't understand my question, but he's like, I don't know, nothing. And, and I said, really? So I, I said, mentally, you don't tell yourself anything like when the going gets tough in a race and you need to hold your pace and he's like no <laughs> and i just i wanted to continue to pepper him with some of these follow-up questions uh but i didn't want to monopolize all the time but i couldn't believe he actually said that to me but then it was interesting because some other people kind of asked him different questions and being around Minneapolis here, hockey is a big sport around Minneapolis, and somebody asked about the superstitions of hockey players and different things that people do as kind of good luck charms that they do before a game that you know kind of gives them confidence and whatnot. And they asked him if he has any special rituals or kind of things that he does as far as what he wears and what he eats and how he goes about his routine, like leading up to one of these big marathons. And he said there wasn't necessarily anything special, but what he did say that was very insightful as far as the mental part of it goes, is he's like, you know what, you just have to show up believing that you're capable of running that fast time. And that's kind of my mental training principle, I guess, for you, is like, regardless of whether you're trying to break four hours or break 3.30 or break 2.05 or whatever it is, like when you show up, do you honestly believe that you are going to do it? And I think it's such a huge deal. And that's the whole reason that people create these superstitions and different things like that to begin with is because it gives them belief and that confidence that yes, I'm going to win or yes, I'm going to get this done. But there's a big difference between showing up to a race and just being like, well, I would like to set a PR or I kind of want to set a PR versus I honestly believe deep down, like in the fiber of my being that I'm going to set a PR and that I'm going to run my best race. And I think that's a critically important thing to have that inner kind of peace and that inner confidence when you're going out, especially whether you're racing against the best in the world or whether you're just racing against other people in your age group, just that belief is absolutely everything as far as how it translates to performance at the end of the day. So again, to kind of recap those three things, slow down the long runs and the recovery runs a little bit because it'll help you on the back end when you get to intervals and speed work. Surround yourself with better people, people that will make you level up and will demand more of you. And then also believe in yourself. And when you show up to a race, really kind of have that inner confidence and that peace that you're going to be able to get the job done. And if you do these three things, it's just going to help you out a ton and certainly help out your performance. So have a great day. Hope you got something out of this video. Keep training and racing smarter, faster, and injury-free. Catch up with you on the next one.